By 2003, sultry Canadian jazz singer Diana Crow had become a household name and could take her pick of the world's most prestigious concert venues. I was sitting around talking with some musicians and some friends about whether we like Carnegie Hall better or Royal Albert Hall, but we like Radio City Music Hall, and I thought, oh, you little brat, can you imagine that you're having this discussion? I hope there's not no, you know, somebody's listening in. But the 38-year-old from British Columbia could hardly be called an overnight sensation. My life is moving very, very fast in the last, in the last six years in particular. You know, six years ago, I wasn't really able to pay, pay rent and was still, you know, surviving by playing uh, gigs that I really didn't want to play, which, which you know, seven hours a night in the a place where I didn't want to be, but it was a good dues paying, you know, it was a lot of that. Going from playing piano in hotel foyers to the stage of Carnegie Hall was understandably quite a culture shock. Places like that, it is such, there's such a history, and so you can turn the nervous energy around from being, it being daunting and to uh, one of uh, inspiration, so I try to I try to think that way, or nothing at all. I don't think I just pretend I'm, I just take, let the music take over, which is the most important thing anyways, you know, it shouldn't be anything. Once, once you start playing, you just, that's what it is. Having made her name singing and playing jazz standards by the likes of Cole Porter, George Gershwin and Irving Berlin, she was preparing to launch something of a culture shock of her own with the release of her eighth album, The Girl in the Other Room. It featured new songs by artists like Tom Waits, Chris Smither, Arthur Herzog and Joni Mitchell, as well as her own writing collaborations with her English singer-songwriter husband, Elvis Costello. It just came to life and then you look at it and you have 17 tunes recorded and you put it together and it becomes a book of short stories. Three years later, on the eve of releasing the very best of Diana Crowell, she'd become a very contented mother of twins. I want to be joyful every moment I can, and these little guys are like magic wands like that, you know, they're just full of light, and so it goes into everything that I do, so I'm really happy.